In my last video about the basics of using the appearance panel, which you can watch at the link in the description below, we talked about how strokes and fills can each have their own effect settings. So you may remember in that video, I applied a drop shadow to the stroke. So I'm doing that here by clicking on the stroke then going to the FX menu, stylize, and then drop shadow. And I'll just apply that. And we can see the drop shadow on the stroke here. And then we also learned that you can, of course, apply an effect to the whole object. And that's the typical way drop shadows are applied. You start by clicking in this empty space at the bottom of the panel to deselect any individual strokes and fills. And then you can do the same thing, applying the effect now to the whole object. So now we've got two drop shadows and the second drop shadow is even larger because it's adding on to the extra size created by the first drop shadow. So effects can be applied to individual strokes and fills, and they can be applied to the whole object. Now I'm going to just delete the drop shadow on the stroke. And what's similar to this concept, and you may have noticed this, is that there is an opacity setting on every stroke and every fill, and then there is an opacity setting that applies to the whole object. So I can give the stroke, a multiply blending mode. And let me just make this a little lower here. And now you can see where the stroke is overlapping the yellow fill, it's turning green and it's getting darker even where it's overlapping the drop shadow. Then at the bottom of the stack here, we have the opacity setting for the whole object. So if I change this to 50%, you can see how that adds on to the stroke opacity setting and then everything is getting 50% transparent. So it's just interesting to realize that any path you draw in Illustrator can have at a minimum three separate opacity settings. And when I remove one, I'm just gonna select the stroke opacity setting and hit the trash icon you can see the setting just returns to default. So these settings never go away. They just can return to normal and 100% when you delete the opacity setting. So there's a lot going on in the appearance panel. Now we're going to explore appearances on type. So here, when you select type, you can see we have type at the top of the appearance panel. So whatever you have selected is always identified at the top of the appearance panel, whether you have a path selected or a group or even a layer, it's always identified here at the top of the appearance panel. And we know already with type that there's a couple of ways to select it. One, you can select it like this using the selection tool. And in this case, you have the baseline and you've selected the whole type object. And then another way to select type is to get your type tool out and just highlight the individual letters. And you can see what happens in the appearance panel. Now we're looking at the character's appearance. And we can actually select this type using the appearance panel. So if I click up here at the top level where it says type, it takes me back to the appearance for the whole object with the baseline selected. And then characters on this level right here, this is kind of like a secret door to the character's appearance. So if I double click on this, it takes me inside the character's appearance where we have a black fill and no stroke. That's just the default appearance for type. And it's important to know the difference between being here in the appearance panel and being here when you have type selected because you can't add multiple fills and strokes here to the character's appearance. In fact, you can see those are dimmed out and you really can't add effects here in the character's appearance. If we go to the effects menu, you can choose a menu, but everything in it is grayed out. So here we're just limited to one stroke and one fill and one opacity setting. So to build an interesting appearance for type, you need to be out here where we have the whole type object selected. And then you can start to stack up fills and strokes like we've done before. So let's say on this top fill, I'm going to add a striped pattern fill. And then on the fill below it, 
I'll choose a color, just a solid color. And like before, I'll click at the bottom of the panel to deselect that fill. And I'm going to apply a drop shadow to the whole object. And let me make this a little bit lighter there. And I'll click OK. And so just like before, the drop shadow for the whole object automatically applies at the bottom of the stacking order. Above that, we have the character's appearance. And above that, we have these fills. And when I turn them off, we can actually see that default appearance that's applied to the characters, the black fill and no stroke. So the key to creating interesting appearances for type is to make sure that you're applying it to the whole object. You can also, like we've seen before, drag these around and notice when I put these fills below the characters, they're covered up by the character's appearance. But you can also double click, go into the secret door and give this a fill of none. Go back by single clicking on type and now you can see everything that's below the character's appearance because the stroke and fill are set to none. So dragging and dropping is a great way to work here just to experiment a little and understand how the stacking order works. And here I have another example that will help us take a closer look at the stacking order. So here I have the number 36 and if I double click on characters, I can see that that pink fill is already applied to the appearance of the characters. And now I'm going to apply an appearance by single clicking on type, and then I'm going to add a fill. So I'll come down to the add new fill button and I'm adding a black fill here. And here I'm going to apply an effect to that black fill. And this one is called convert to shape. And this effect will convert that fill into any of these shapes here, a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, or an ellipse. And I'm going to choose ellipse. And then the settings here, I'm going to make this an absolute 130 points by 130 points. So it's a perfect circle. And then I'll click OK. And I want it to appear behind the pink fill of the numbers. So I'm going to drag this below the characters level because that's where the pink fill is. Now, normally this circle should be centered on the numbers. I'm going to get my selection tool and we can see that the bounding box for this type is really large. This is a typeface called Funky Dory, and it just happens to have a really large bounding box. And so the circle is centering on the bounding box. So there's another effect that I can use to make this center up properly. And I'll come down here to the bottom of the appearance panel and choose path and outline object. And that fixes it. And here is that effect. It applies automatically at the top of the appearance panel. So outline object, and it doesn't have any settings when I click on this, it only does this one thing, which is to outline the type, just like you would do if you were expanding it, or if you were going into the type menu and choosing create outlines, only this is a live effect. So it's non-destructive. And when it outlines the numbers here, the black fill, the circle is able to center on that outline. So this gives us another example of how the stacking order works in the appearance panel. We already know that the fill, this black fill is below the pink fill that's inside of the characters. And this is a stacking order from bottom to top that works the same anywhere in Illustrator, you know, in the layers panel, or when you're drawing something, every object stacks one up on top of the other. But we have another order here in the appearance panel, and that is the order in which things are applied. And that goes from top to bottom. So the outline object effect is applied before the pink fill is applied to those numbers and before the black circle fill is applied to this object. Notice what happens when I take this outline object effect and drag it down below the ellipse effect. So now in that order of instructions from top to bottom, the circle is created before the type is outlined. So the outlining has no effect. It came late to the party after the circle was already created and centered on that bounding box. But I can drag it up before the ellipse effect and now it's working. So this is an important part of getting to know the appearance panel. If you play around by dragging and changing up the order, 
you'll discover for yourself how it works. And so I hope you'll experiment and have some fun with it. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and in my online learning community. Find out more at my website, lauracoylecreative.com and be sure to join my email list. You'll receive a welcome gift and helpful Illustrator tips delivered right to your inbox. And thanks for watching.